right before you go live, your computer crashes and everything falls apart. All right, we are here. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about uh, my guide or my idea, I should say my strategies on getting to ride Rise of the Resistance on opening day, which is this coming up Friday. So let's see if we can try to figure this out together. Now, the thing that we have going for us here in Disneyland is that they have already launched this over in Florida. So we have a little bit of information about how things could work because we have real world data. And a lot of times when things happen, they're just happening for the very, very first time. So nobody really has a clear idea what's going to go on. But this is different in the fact that we have the, the model that has been happening over in Florida. So it's been open there for a little over a month. And basically the way that it works is people show up, they line up every, every morning uh, to get the very first boarding passes to, to get into Rise of the Resistance. So they've been having people line up as early as 4 a.m. for a park that opens at 7 a.m. And basically the way that the boarding pass works is as soon as you get through the gate, if you have your app open, your Disneyland Park app, you can then, there's a little button that becomes aware to you where you can book a boarding group. Now, the way that a boarding group works is everyone in your party has to be in the same uh, group party or boarding party because what they're trying to make sure that doesn't happen is if everybody got their own and each boarding group was good for, say, up to four guests, it would get flooded out. People would ride it over and over again. So the, what you have to do is if you all want to ride together, you have to put someone in charge. That person has to scan everybody else's tickets into their app, which means that you'd already have to have your annual passes on hand or your paper tickets on hand. So if you have to buy a ticket day of, that's a really, really bad plan. You want to have all of that data right away so that you can have it in one phone. Now, as soon as you go through the turnstile and you're actually inside of the Disneyland Park, like literally through the ticket taker, your phone will pass a beacon or an internet waypoint, which will then let your phone into uh, or will let their, their app know that you're actually inside the park. Once you're inside the park, you are then given the opportunity to book one of those boarding groups. I've heard that they're completely randomized. I've heard that it's not necessarily first come, first serve. I've heard different ways on, on the way that this boarding group access works. But the one thing that is consistent is that they go very, very fast. So essentially, you want to, this Friday, make sure you're one of the very first people to get into the park so that there's more distribution left, more access left for you to, to get to do uh, the attraction. So that means that it's all based on getting there super early. And Disneyland has been incredibly vague on what time things are opening and what time you can get access. I do know that earlier in the week, they were saying that the Toy Story parking lot would be opening up at 2 a.m. And now that has been moved back to midnight. But I have not heard anything about the Pixar or Mickey and Friends parking lots opening up any sooner at all. So therefore, it's a real gamble on how all of this is going to work. And I'm going to share with you what my strategy is based off of being somebody that goes to the park all the time and based off what I've seen happening over in Florida and just general knowledge of how these things tend to work at Disneyland. So the thing, or the way that I believe that this is going to function best is you need to get there. I'm going to say I'm going to try to get there at, yeah, Done by Saturday says, sounds like you got to shut it down Thursday night and just get in line for the very next day. Man, that, you know, that's a hard thing to do. That's a hard thing to do to, to go all night long like that and then have the energy to ride. And Disneyland is an incredibly energetic place, which means that it takes energy from you. Even though you can get high on the magic, the, the magic crash is, is hardcore. Rob Anderson, thank you so much for the second super chat. I really, really appreciate you uh, supporting the channel, and hopefully this information works out beyond this Friday, just in general. So the plan for this Friday for me is the following. 
if they're going to let now Mickey and Friends, or I'm sorry, Toy Story Parking Lot open up at midnight, my goal is going to be to get to the park, I'm going to say around 2. Because I don't think that in that hour and a half or two hours before I get there, that hopefully not enough people could get to take all the access. I'm a little bit worried about getting there too early because if you get there at midnight, that is eight hours until the park actually opens up and you get to the gate. Once you get to the gate and you get your 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 boarding pass, it doesn't mean that you're going to get to the gate and you can go ride it. Your boarding pass time could be 8 p.m. at night or it could be 11 o'clock at night or 10 o'clock at night. So therefore... You could have a very long window of Disneyland after a long time of just standing around. And by the way, I don't advise any of this. I'm doing this purely for the sport of it. All of this will just be ridiculous a month from now. You know, as time passes, this will just reduce and reduce and reduce. And eventually it won't be this insane. But if you really want to do it on opening day, my advice is you need to get there somewhere between midnight and 2 a.m. Now, my second advice is this. Don't drive your car. I'm not driving my car. Because what happens is is there's only one parking lot open and everybody's trying to get in that one parking lot. You're going to get up early. You're going to be on a lack of sleep and you're going to get to Disneyland just to wait in line to park your car. And then once you park your car, you have to walk over to the bus. You have to wait for a bus and the bus has to commute you over. If you show up at midnight, I would almost guarantee you there will be a 30 to 45 minute wait to get parked. So now we're at 1230, 1245. Then when you walk over to the bus, let's say that's another five minutes. You're at 1250, 1240 ish bus ride over 10 minutes. You're at 1 a.m. Wait to get through security and you've already kind of lost an hour and a half. What I'm doing is I'm going to be taking an Uber there. Because an Uber gets you there and you just get out and you have none of those hassles. Where is my Uber going to take me? I thought about this. And logically, the smartest place I could think to get dropped off would be the Grand Californian Hotel. Because hotels never close. They have to allow guests to come and go at all hours of the night. And the Grand Californian has its own security uh, point into downtown Disney. Now, here's where it gets to be real wild. Nobody knows what time downtown Disney opens. My common sense logic says if you're going to let people park their cars at midnight, you don't want them just sitting in their cars because that's a liability. People leave their cars running to stay warm. Dum dums die. You know, that's not what Disney wants. So I'm thinking that as long as they're allowing parking, then they're going to allow access to downtown Disney because it is just safer to keep people out of their cars in a secure area uh, that's lighted, plenty of space, and it can just be a safe zone. So in my estimation, I believe that people will be lined up in front of Disneyland around 1230 or midnight, those that that take Uber. That's going to be a really long wait. And I think that if you get up at 6 or 8 o'clock, you're going to see a line that could potentially be so long that when it's time to get into the park, it might already be gone. And the most brutal scenario in all of this is not sleeping, waiting for hours, and then actually getting through the gate and seeing that it's already done for the day. That that's that's the worst gamble. That's the worst payoff for all of this. Now, the other thing that could happen to you, which is a really, really big risk, is that the attraction breaks down a lot. I don't know how much you know about Rise of the Resistance. Not going to give any show spoilers, but technical spoiler is that there are multiple ride systems. There's four different waypoints that you kind of have to access your, your way through. And... Sometimes those don't line up properly. Sometimes things don't go the way that they're supposed to. On top of the fact that you have state-of-the-art, special effects, more animatronics than they've ever put into an attraction. Like There's a lot of tech there. And if we know anything about tech, 
I'll use today's stream for an example. Stuff breaks. Stuff doesn't always work the way that you want it to. So the other brutal thing is that you get there, you get your access, and then some point during the day, it's not working anymore. That could be that could be a, a rough a rough go. So uh, done by Saturday says bring a buddy, and I absolutely think that if you're going to do this and you're going to do this successfully, you have to show up with a crew of people. Um, that that are willing to hang and do the overnight. And I would also suggest bringing people that don't easily get irritated because if somebody in your group's becoming a complainer and doesn't like lines, then it's a disaster. You got to do this for the sport of it. You got to do this knowing that there's a 50-50 shot that you get to ride the attraction. Uh, Jenna Side says, I heard that they're not letting people through the security gates to downtown until an hour and a half before the park actually opens. See, Jenna, you make a great point. Are they letting people in early or not? But because they're allowing parking early, it makes me think they're going to let park access early. And what's going to happen if they don't let people in? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all up in the air. I mean, if a cast member told you that, then that's probably good intel to go on. I'm just curious about this because sometimes Disneyland will call in the audible Jenna and, and they'll, they'll change the rules as things are happening. Are they going to really let 5,000 people line up on Harbor? Are they going to let 5,000 people back into uh, the Disneyland hotel security? Are they going to let 5,000 people back into the access that you get off of the side of uh, Mickey and friends over by the old rainforest cafe in the ESPN zone? Are they going to let, uh, you know, people stand in front of the Grand California to get in those security points. Like, I think if Disneyland doesn't just let people gather in the Esperanza, then they're making a huge mistake and a huge liability just having that many people that late at night milling around. And I don't think that they'll kick you out because you let me just pay twenty five dollars to park my car, and what do I, I got to sit in my car or I, I got to go walk up and down Harbor Boulevard for seven and a half hours? So. Jenna, I, I'm agreeing with you in that I haven't heard different, but my hunch or my expectations when I think about it logistically is somebody in upper management is going to have to pull the lever and say, we just got to let people stand in between the two parks. And really, what's the harm in that? Like it to me seems like Disneyland is built to be a safe space, assuming that they have security guards on duty. And they just don't shut down the, the the security guard stations, but I don't think that they do that because they constantly have cast members and people coming and going, delivery people and whatnot. Um, letting people gather outside of the park is a thousand times safer than making them wander around. And I think that if they only allow people to get there an hour and a half, that is just going to create chaos and a surge. Versus if at midnight. 100 people roll in, and at 12.30, another 200 people roll in, and then by 1 a.m., you've got 1,000, and by 2 a.m., you've got 750 people or you know showing up. I think that that's just a drip, 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 drip. So you're going to park early, and you're going to sleep in the parking lot. Not, not a bad idea. Um, it's tempting. You know, what you could always do, and Jenna, I think you've got a really smart strategy here, is sleep in the car. Keep an eye on Twitter because you know as soon as the gates open, somebody somewhere is going to leak, and Twitter is always the best time to get real-time news. So you could stay over there. You could stay comfy. You could get your beauty sleep, not that you need it, and uh, rest up and know exactly when it's time to go from Toy Story and go over. I did see uh, in another YouTube channel there was a cast member um, that was a bus driver that said they're having them run the buses from 2.30 to 4.30, like they're doing the bus runs early. So my guess is they're going to play it safe. They're going to let people in. My other theory is they're just not giving out all that intel to try to lower expectations. And they're probably not letting people say exactly what's happening because what they don't want I mean, in a dream world, they would like for just enough people to show up to ride the ride at 730, 6 o'clock in the morning. But we all know that's not realistic. They've hyped this up to us for over three years. We've had 
the land open now for close to a year, nine months. It's happened out in Florida. Everywhere you go, you get spoilers. You know, if you watch YouTube channels, you get spoilers. Um, if you watch cast or uh, Disney Imagineering, you get spoilers. Like, I want to ride this before I know everything that happens. Like, I'm so mad at Disneyland that in the commercials, they show me that a lightsaber comes through the ceiling. And I'm not spoiling it for you. That's now common knowledge amongst everyone. And I want that to be a surprise. So I hope that... Um, I hope that it works out and that we can get in early. Tony Mendez says sleeping on the street to get in. What is this? A Mondo show? Exactly. I mean, Tony's talking about Mondo art gallery down in Austin, Texas, ran by good friends of ours that, that make really uh, fantastic limited edition posters and prints. And they let people sleep out on the sidewalk. They let people sit in chairs, but even they have a concern about how dangerous that gets, how weird it gets trying to like, not get involved, but you're kind of involved. And Disneyland is a billion-dollar corporation with a B. If they've got thousands of people at all those waypoints, it's going to be too many people to shoo away. I think it could just get crazy. All right, I, I think I've beat this into the ground. Jenna's advice, because this is a talk show we're all doing together, and we're going to get to that next. Jenna's advice, park, sleep in the car, go over when you know it's good. My advice, Uber, don't bring a car. Cars only slow you down. Cars and kids always slow you down. Uh, I think somewhere in the middle, there's there's probably the right answer. That's what me and the Batu crew is doing, how we're uh, planning on rolling out this experience. And if I have to wait at a security line, I'll wait at a security line. But my goal is, to, to go back to the very beginning, my goal is to be one of the first 10,000 people in line because I'm thinking that the attraction can probably do, you know, a thousand something an hour, 10 hours. So I just, if I get there at 6 a.m. and I just see that there's just a mob of people, I would literally just go right back home because you could just do the math and say, all these people are here for one thing, and that's to get one of those boarding passes. Um, and, you know, if you could see the, the amount of people, then we're done. Uh, Steve Johns, thank you so much for giving me a tip for my Uber last night. Switching over to another topic here, that's really the advice and, and so far what we know for um, uh, when Rise of the Resistance is going to open. I'll give you a couple of head, heads up. Uh, follow Dateline Disney over on Twitter. They give really good information. Um, keep a look on Mice Chat. They normally have breaking news. Keep a look on the OC Register. That'd be another great place to, to figure out what's going on. And also make sure that you have uh, Disneyland notifications going off on your Twitter for Disneyland and the the, the AP uh, Twitter account. That will give you some some good context. Steve John says Batu is really for 35 and older, and I do agree that it is a bit of an an adult part of the park. I'm not going to argue about that. I know you have kids that might change your opinion. Tony Mendez says I'm doing Walt Disney World next weekend. Going to live it. Uh, going to give it a shot the next Friday. We'll be at Hollywood Studios early in the a.m. on that day. Tony, my advice to you is to try to get there around 4 o'clock and just know that boarding passes normally are gone in the first 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, Tiki Andy, I'm not sure what you're talking about there, bud. Uh, oh, not the money man. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what Tiki, Tiki Andy's talking about, but I'm sure it's good times. Oh, Tiki, Tiki and Steve are buds. Anyways. I real quick I want to thank um I want to thank Steve for giving me a, a tip and if you didn't watch last night's live stream I had this wild idea that I thought I would check out to raise some money for the channel uh because there's things that I want to do to to bring all this content and make things fun for all of us so I had the idea of doing something called Disneyland Uber and if you see this pop up again what I'm doing and, and it was really so rewarding and fun for me, and it seemed like everybody that was on the live stream had a good time, is I basically acted as a Uber driver inside of Disneyland with my live stream camera, and if you super chatted to to invest in the, uh, the channel, then to reward you, I said, hey, where do you want me to Uber you to in the park? So 
We went to the top of Tarzan. We went and I showed people the new Hope Tree, uh, Fowler's Harbor, the Water Ball in Tomorrowland, like really, really great locations, specific locations. And as I'm walking, I'm talking and, and sort of giving you like a live feed of things that I know through the park. So it was a lot of fun. And Rob Anderson, yeah, maybe next time uh, we Uber California Adventure just to sort of mix it up. Um, jo 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 uh, uh, Talks Wrestling says, I've done Rise of the Resistance twice at Walt Disney World. Best attraction I've ever been on. I don't think you're over hypey, man. Like, it, I have not heard a single person that's done it complain about it. Or, or say that it's not completely amazing or great. So, wahoo, talks wrestling. I guarantee you that you're right. Um, Disney Uber Eats. Disney Uber Eats will be, uh, I guess, you send a super chat, and then I go buy a piece of food, and I review it live. I mean, I don't know. That's how it works. Like, I, it only came to me last night when I was walking, and I saw popcorn laying on the ground. I said, do I eat a stranger's popcorn to be funny on video? And the answer was No. No, I do not eat a stranger's popcorn off the ground. So that was a fun video. So if you ever see that pops, pop up, that's what we're doing. What I plan on doing with that Super Chat money, pronounce the way. Zo Even your pronounced is <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm a, I'm a hillbilly originally from Kentucky, and I'm not trying to be rude. The way. I think that, man, that's crazy. Jew... <laughs> J U A. I was doing the sound, not being not being mean. J U A. Pronounce Zwe. Man, that's crazy. I I don't know if I got it, but I I, I will. I'll do it a thousand different times, and then it'll be our 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 good time joke. Tiki Anderson. I rode Rise of the Resistance yesterday uh, for a cast preview, and there are no words with how amazing this attraction is. So Tiki, I was there yesterday. Good O T A. And um. It was really interesting to see people flow in, and I, I sat over there with my camera, and I don't want to be rude and film people without their permission, but I was just watching the faces of people that were exiting, and everybody was high on the magic. I mean, just completely high on it, uh, and having, oh, be quiet, Steve. Everybody was having, Steve John's always looking for drama. Uh, everybody was having a really good time coming off the exit and it was uh it was absolutely just invigorating to see everybody having such a good time it, i can't wait to ride it i also i have a video coming out thursday close enough all right there we go thanks man zue me and zue talks wrestling close enough i, I can't wait to meet zue <laughs> one day as we can just play hey by the minute my name's pronounced this way you hillbilly uh, uh, and i'll take it. It, it it's all in love here when we hang out together and talk disneyland um so anyways I, I have a video coming out Thursday that will sort of show some of the things that I've learned about Rise of the Resistance and how it works and just things that were put into the park that I didn't even realize were, were there. Um, love you too, bud. So moving over to, to other topics, one of the things that I want to do is I want to put a green wall behind me because part of the idea of this talk show is that we do it together. This is a weekly time for us to talk about Disneyland. And in the future, I will try to figure out ways where other people can be in the live chat or maybe we can meet up and do it. Like, I, I really want this to be something we do together. So I thought what would be really, really fun is if I green screen behind me and because so many of you are artists and designers that if you submit what the set looks like, it just one week it's your set. It's like whatever you think the show should look like. And I just thought that that would be so funny, the interesting circumstances that people would want to see me sit in as we talk about Disneyland for the week or me and whatever guest that, you know, I can patch in or, or however we can do this. So I, I thought that that would be a fun thing to do as well as, um, as a, you can see today, I took a little bit of time and grabbed some sort of promo photos to get us hyped up on what we're all going to be experiencing soon. Um uh, Steve John's looking for a high speed car chase. Oh man, that that's good emoji work there, Steve. And I bet what if I have the green screen, like maybe one day when I'm doing this, you just see me talking about Disneyland while there's a high speed car chase going on behind me. So imagination, sky's the limit. Pivoting over to a, a couple of other things to talk about. Snow White is is down. I have a video that you'll be able to see soon where it shows the construction on that. Um 
I'm super pumped on what this edit is going to be. Uh, I think I love that ride. I love the nostalgia of it. I love that it's, you know, an opening day attraction, even though it's not the original version. You know, it was taken all the way down and, and put together. Um, and they're going through it. I happen to be friends with somebody who's working on the project. And um, I, I, I think that it's going to, as much as I can say, I think that it's going to just be a, a really nice upkeep to uh to something that just needs to be there for the test of time also if you go to the park today over it it's a small world it's just dark it's completely darked out there's nothing happening over there they're not even playing it's a small world like it's just a dead zone while they're getting it already it's supposed to be open uh this friday as well as this friday lunar new year opens up over in dca so if i get a late boarding pass i plan on going in getting my boarding pass for galaxy's edge and then i'm going to go over to dca and check out the lunar new year celebration and see what they did for that this year chris uh baraka says you think getting there at 5 a.m is 5 a.m is too late for friday chris i i really do i i, I hate to say that because that's stupid early because if Sorry. At 5 a.m., you're already going to be up and waiting in line for three hours. But I think I think that's going to be too early, man. I, I, I or uh, I'm sorry. I think that's going to be too late to get there. I mean, if you could shoot for four, I think four is going to put you in a safe zone. And even um, let me backtrack so I make sure that I have her name right. My bud, Jenna, you know. If Jenna's right and they're not letting you through the gates till security time, those lines are going to be very fatigued and long. And I think that, you know, why I would say 5 a.m. is maybe a little bit too late and you should get there earlier. Let's use this logic. 5 a.m., people feel like they're functioning. So if people go, park opens at 8, if I get to three hours beforehand, that's not too bad. But you got to be a psycho to get up at 5 four because four is basically like do i sleep you know that's like getting up for a flight out of lax time so i think that that hour between four and five a.m is really sort of the cutoff point of the psychopaths and i think you have to be a psychopath to do this that being said chris if you see me in line what's up bud let's hang out uh Kalosa Kukuyanga says, I'm visiting Disneyland next week from out of state, and I'm so nervous to try to get this boarding pass. So, Kelsey, what I'm going to say is you should make sure that you get there super early. You say you're visiting next week. Um, and Well, The Rock gets up at 4 a.m. because The Rock gets a lot of work done. He's also going to die of a heart attack one day. Kelsey, I would say that if you're getting there in a week, so like next Friday... I think that if you get there, what Chris is saying, by 5 a.m. or 6 a.m., I think you'll probably be okay. But if you really want to ride Rise because you're coming in from out of town and you want to make sure that you know you wrap it all up on this one trip where you've got airfare and taking time off from work and spending money in a hotel or staying with friends or whatever, I would just suggest getting there at 5. And also, I would suggest making sure to read Mice Chat um, because th when they do their week, their their weekly update from Disneyland, they'll probably be like, Hey, just so you know, like it's been selling out by five minutes after people to get in there at that time. Um, also keep it an eye. Oh, you'll be there next Friday. Yeah. I, I think a week later, just a rough guess five to 6 AM. You should be okay. Uh, but we'll see what's up. Uh, Jenna says now before you leave, end up at the parking lot at 11 to try to park by 12 nap for four hours in the car, then head to security. Hey, Jenna's got a plan. I love somebody who has a plan. That's going to work out. Um, I, I like that plan a lot, Jenna. And, you know, the best thing about your plan, Jenna, is that you can keep an eye on social media. And if all of a sudden it's like it announces that they open up security or whatever, you can just, you know, you're already dressed to roll out. Go there. Just do us a favor. Don't leave that car rolling. Don't die of those exhaust fumes. Because the dead Jenna doesn't do the resistance any good. You You didn't rise. So let's not make that happen. Tony says they should have a mobile droid stand selling breakfast Ronto wraps at the opening. They would make a killing. So one of the things I'm very excited about doing this is, believe it or not, this is going to be my first ever rope drop. I, I like to stay at the end. I've shut it down so much. But um, 
I, I, I want to just go and uh, see the opening. And another thing that I'm excited about is I want that breakfast Ronto wrap. It just it sounds so good. And I like the evening Ronto wraps. I've never done the veggie one or, or the, the, you know, imposter Ronto. I guess that's what they call it. But the, the regular one is great. And so um, getting the breakfast one would sound amazing. Chris, I don't know. Uh, parking is open at midnight we talked about that earlier in the show chris they're going to be opening up toy story at at four um they're going to be opening up that at four o'clock or i'm sorry they're going to be opening up that at midnight you got me messed up with your four your four there uh they are going to be opening up the parking lot at midnight that's toy story mickey and friends is still listed as opening up an hour and a half before the park opens which park opens at eight so that'd be 6 30 a.m uh, I'm Ubering because I don't want to have to deal with with uh, parking. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited to see a rope drop. I've never done it before after going to the park over 400 and something times just because I like staying till the end. Um, let me go back to find that proper pronunciation. Zway says that breakfast Ronto wrap is definitely worth it. I'm very much looking forward to one of those. And I will also say, Zway, that... I think that that is probably the most elaborate hot dog stand that's ever been built, ever. I mean, the Ronto Wrap hot dog stand is absolutely phenomenal the way that it's put together. Um, sleep all day Thursday, treat it like a graveyard shift. Well, actually, <laughs> I'd love to do that, but I have some interviews booked. And if you're a, a big Disneyland fan over on YouTube, like you probably are, I'm interviewing Justin Scard on Thursday. Um, so that will be for some of you, Disneyland World's colliding. Uh, very, very excited to interview Justin. And if you've never watched his channel, it's called Random Land. I'm sure you've seen it because he's got a lot of subscribers. He's been covering the park. He's one of the original OGs. He and Adam the Woo are sort of the first guys to do this. And um, both of them are very worthy of your your subscription and ringing that bell notice. And um, I, can't, I really can't wait to hang out with Justin. I really like his work and uh, what he does. So unfortunately... I can't sleep all day Thursday because busy day on Thursday. Okay, so let's um, let's pivot over as we wrap up today. And I, I apologize about the technical difficulties getting out of the gate today. I'll have to go back and edit out the beginning of this video so that it's not amateur hour. Uh, but that's that's how it goes. And hopefully it's been fun to see these slides behind me today. Uh, I only went with things that have been released by Disney, so we weren't showing, you know, fan stuff not not only not to steal somebody else's content but to um give away more than what we're supposed to know i'm assuming since they've showed us so much there's still a lot that we don't know and we'll 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 be surprised when we go there uh no problem chris it's all just a logical guess you know don't don't exactly know all of this but um if you go back and listen to the first part of the conversation there's sort of the logic and jenna and i sort of debating on how this could come together and work and um We'll see how it all plays out. Hopefully everybody just has fun and everybody's nice and safe. But um, so if we're going to do this, I'll see you there, bud. If we're going to do this, I, I have a question for you. What do we name this? Because I had mentioned last week that because, you know, I'm a professional podcaster and I know podcasting like, you know, nobody's business. We've made over 1,100 episodes now um, that we could take the audio feed of this and turn it into a podcast. But we need to come up with a name and because I want you guys to be my co-host on this and I want this to be something that we do together and a very community based show, we need to figure out what a, a name for this is going to be. So as we're doing this, if you come up with one, just drop a name in the comment section and when one seems to stick or pop, then we'll know that we have our name for our weekly uh, meetup where we all get to talk about Disneyland stuff. Um, Steve John says, we need a Disney Bricky montage edit before you go live. Might help with the uh, latency of live audio. Well, that adds a lot of work to my day, Steve, so I appreciate that, bud. I'll, I'll get on that. Thank you, sir. Um, Armenian Redneck that's a great name. <laughs> I hope I'm reading that right. How long y'all estimate until the hype die, dies down? Um, I think that, let me think about that. Well, it's going to be a while, Redneck, because um, 
it's going to be locals going crazy for the first month and Star Wars super fans. I like the bricky, bricky, bricky room. That, that, <laughs> Once I said it out loud, I got the joke. The bricky, 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 bricky room. The bricky, 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 bricky room. Uh, the audio don't work at the bricky, 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 bricky room. Disneyland for bystanders is <laughs> <It's> pretty good. <laughs> Hey, Armenian Redneck, your name rules, dude. <laughs> Who gets screen name of the episode award? It's my butt, Armenian Redneck. So th- this is how I think it's going to work, AR. I think it's going to be locals and crazy Star Wars fans. Then it's going to be spring break people. Then it's going to die down a little bit. and They're going to be full on in summer season. And then there's probably a level of people that are waiting to do their big Disneyland trip once Galaxy's Edge is fully operational. And Avengers uh, Campus opens at DCA. There's probably people that are just like, I'm going to book the flight. I'm going to book the hotel when I can get it all in one shot. So I think the hype is going to be for a while. Radiator Racers still lose fast passes early, early in the day. The first... Help me out here, Steve. You're a local I, I, for sure, and a couple of you guys are cast members I can see. Um, Radiator Racers fast passes were gone before you know the, the first hour of the park had ran, and that went for, what, the first two or three years? So I think that this attraction, with its strong word of mouth, with the fandom of, of Star Wars, and with what a technical spectacle it is i feel like this could be a new thing at disneyland where for possibly the next calendar year people line up just to get those boarding passes when they get in and of course you know it will loosen but as i've just pointed out there are the ebbs and flows of when disneyland becomes a destination for tourists and and for people from everywhere so it it could be crazy uh Redneck says, I'm a past cast member at USH going back for Secret Life of Pets. Going back for US, US, oh, Universal Studios Hollywood. Ah, shorthand, you got me there. You got me there, Redneck. Uh, Beanie Draw says, have you bumped into the Tim Trackers on your Disney Adventures? No, I've never seen Tim. I've never met Tim. I actually don't follow his channel. I don't really know what the hype on that guy is. Not, not saying anything bad. He's just like, he's kind of not in my world. Um, Steve says Rise of the Resistance is, or Radiator Spring Racers is usually out of passes before noon. Latest he's ever seen it's 4 p.m. And that's something that's now been open since 2012. Um, so that is eight years. <laughs> Tiki Andy says Racers is still the go-to attraction at DCA. So that's where people go for the first fast passes there. So Tiki Andy, don't you, don't you agree that it's going to be the exact same way? Because Disneyland's kind of been missing this sort of flagship modern day attraction right because i mean the last big thing before galaxy's edge like you know i know toontown and rogers rabbit technically are newer but indiana jones is kind of like the last big adult type thing that they made and if you go and listen to the disneyland for designers episode that jared and i did we talk about how uh indiana jones will sort of be looked at as this sort of odd transitional, you know, that and Star Tours are sort of these odd transitional rides that are kind of in the middle of what the park used to be and what the park is becoming. So it'll be interesting to see if this becomes that sort of flagship attraction that, you know, just getting to ride it will feel special. Um, Beanie Draw says definitely different worlds. He's more of a theme park reviewer, but you love the mouse and, and the land of the mouse yeah yeah no I've, I've never i've never heard anything but good things about tim tracker just for whatever reason it just i don't know i never got into it i think he's a walt disney world guy and i'm in love with disneyland what can i say what can i say <coughs> uh armenian redneck hold on guys i haven't drank in well 43 minutes <clears throat> armenian redneck says before racers it was california screaming slash and credit coaster so I think there's more e-ticket rides we get, the more the crowds balance and spread out. Yeah, I mean, I think that a big idea of Avengers Campus is we can't, you know, if this is the scales of the resort, they can't have 
everybody, you know, over here, over in Galaxy's Edge, they need to bring people over to DCA. So I think, you know, you're, they're combating Star Wars with Marvel, which, I mean, I, I honestly think with how these franchises are grooming and growing, it almost seems like Marvel should have been the big one with a lot of money and Star Wars maybe should have been the one that's a little bit more scaled back, but only the future will will know. That's a different conversation for a different time. Tiki Andy says, Rise will be the new flagship. Which, oh, we already did that. Uh, oh, yeah, he, until um, flagship attraction and the absolute must do. The next one after that will be the second attraction for Avengers Campus whenever that comes out. I agree with you, Tiki Andy. That dark ride sort of simulator but on your own adventure that also seems like a lot of groundbreaking technology and so when both of those are there i think we might feel a pretty a pretty balanced park tony says i'm curious if rise of skywalker impacts us at all i thought it was bad but i'm still pumped for this ride you know (laughs) balance of the force that's funny redneck I, i i think that you know i don't know None of the new movies are going to ruin my childhood. Let me just put it that way. That's the quickest way to get to what I'm thinking. I don't think any of the new movies are going to ruin my childhood, ruin my nostalgia from Star Wars. So I always look at everything as bonus. But the last three movies didn't really resonate with me. I think that they tried way too hard to make a safe bet because they needed a hit because they spent a tremendous amount of money. It's Disney. They can't fail. And so I just think that they really wanted to go for a safe bet. And safe doesn't always work in art art needs to be a little bit dangerous a little bit risque and that's kind of where you find your perfect template once you find the perfect template you can follow it but i i don't think that um i i I mean kylo is the only character that i really can say that i like in the new movies that i really think is like a good character and stands on his own and, and is well designed and has his own like fleshed out personality and if i was a kid like i would want the action figures and i would, would want to play it like him to me the best thing that they have made um since the original three movies that were around when i was a kid is the mandalorian and that's because the mandalorian is really cut from the template of new hope and all of the things that people my age love when they went to go see it so It'll be really interesting to see um, what the future of Star Wars is now that we're out of the Skywalker stories. But I wouldn't hold it past them to start doing things related to these new characters. So we'll we'll see where where it all goes. Um, It is an interesting decision, though, that there's not a lot of that retro Star Wars in Galaxy's Edge. But, you know, if they're putting R2-D2 in there now and Chewbacca, you know, it's like can't really put Luke Skywalker in there because it would be hokey because we know it's not Mark Hamill. So we'll see what happens. Um, John says uh, it would be interesting to see if Mando sees some integration. I mean, you know, (laughs) Baby Yoda merch is coming. They're going to crowbar that in everything that they can because that's a cultural phenomenon. That's one of those things that, you know, you're lucky to give uh, a birth to and launch. So, I mean, they're going to have to find a way to go in there right now there's a I believe there's like a changing thing that has like a a baby Yoda artwork on it and if you go into the antiquity shop there is the uh, Mandalorian helmet and his cool like you know rifle with like the the two prongs on the end of it Um, that's over right behind Doc so baby Yoda the ride you just get to hold him for 10 minutes oh Sign me up, dude. I'm going to get there. If I get there at 2 a.m. for Rise of the Resistance, I'll get there 2 a.m. two weeks ahead of time. If you tell me I could hold Baby Yoda for just five minutes. Oh, God, that'd be amazing. You said 10 minutes? 10 minutes to hold Baby Yoda? I'll get there a month ahead of time if I could just hold that precious little Baby Yoda. Like When that popped up at the end of the first episode, I literally like sat up in my seat and was like, oh, it's a Baby Yoda. And I mean, I knew it wasn't Yoda as a baby. But, you know, it's, it's also easier to say Frankenstein than Frankenstein's monster. All right. Let's wrap up this week's chit chat. We ended up doing a lot of Rise of Resistance speculation and information. And this time next week, hopefully, many of us will be able to give uh, a review. 
I am uh, enjoying doing this. Hopefully you're enjoying hanging out. I apologize for the technical difficulties. It was all because I wanted to give you guys some stuff to look at. So I'll try to get that ironed out. Unfortunately, the way YouTube live works is you can only test it by actually going live. So I'll, now that these settings are working, we'll, we'll keep these dialed in and, and hope that this makes us transition faster uh, the next time. Got some videos that we'll be dropping up. I'm going to be on Thursday dropping a video that actually show some interesting information about uh, Rise of the Resistance. And it's also going to kind of act as like a documentary of this is what the land was like before Rise came. How does it change it? I've, I've been slowly making these sort of land videos. Like, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but I walked the entire perimeter of Tomorrowland. And the idea was that now that I have this like historical record of Tomorrowland summer 2019, one year from that video, we can walk it again and see every little thing that has changed. So I, I have that coming up for Galaxy's Edge. I also did sort of a walk through the transitional stage that we're at over um, in Fantasyland and a couple of little new things that I learned. And if you didn't see the uh, Uber video last night, by all means, check it out. I will be going live Friday. And if I ride it, it will be my reaction video live from the park and I won't spoil things. I'll just tell you how I feel and sort of give you a professional review without spoilers because I want everybody to be surprised. So I'll be going live with that or there'll be the disappointment live video um, and I'll probably be doing some updates on stories. So if you are in your car sleeping and you follow me on Instagram, I'll be kind of showing people how big the crowd is. Um, there we go. Kelsey, you and I are on the same page as we wrap up today. And I will be making a long form vlog. So if you've watched uh, the video that I did that was long format about me trying to be the very last person to leave Disneyland Christmas on the last night, um, I'll be doing a video like that that'll pop up over the weekend. So when I'm out there, I'm going to be making some content. Like I said, if I have a while for my um, pass uh, to, to let me into the ride, I'm going to go over and, and do some Lunar New Year and DCA. So lots of stuff coming. Thank you so much for... Um, following along with the channel and thanks a lot for ubering with me last night and i want to thank everybody that gave me a uh super chat today it really helps out so thank you steve johns thank you rob anderson uh, i appreciate both of you guys doing some super chats and putting some money into this because i really do plan on trying to build a set here and and really come up with some ways where we can make this a, a community conversation that we do once a week together if you got a good name for the show comment below please like this Please leave a comment. I can't stress with you guys. If everybody here left a comment, this would go out to more people. More people would show up and things would grow and we could do more and more. So nice to see you guys. I will uh, see you again tomorrow with another video. I have spoken. <laughs>